Good morning, everyone. Listen, I have a few things that I want to address on this morning. I'm going to lay it out for you guys. The first thing I am going to discuss is the um, the live that EJ did on the other night where my my uh, basically said that she didn't believe that Island Girl was a medical examiner's assistant, nor did she believe that Dr. Ruggie actually worked at that um, Cook County's medical examiner's office. Okay, I'm going to get to that. The second thing I am going to address is what EJ said on his live on last evening, and that is that my my came on my platform and spoke ill of him and, you know, just blasted his chat and and the people in the chat room, the panel and all those things. And last but not least, and I saved that one for last because that one is dear to my heart. And this one is concerning Ava, okay? And so I'm not going to say anything else about that until I get to that part. But for right now, what I'm going to do, because I am the person that I am, and I actually had a conversation with Cassie, and she said something that made a lot of sense to me, is that maybe this young lady, Island Girl, you know, actually does have some affiliation with this Dr. Ruggy person, okay? But before she, we had that conversation, I had already gone uh, 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 into researching to see if there might have been another Dr. Ruggie. And to do that, I just changed the spelling of his name. And when I changed the spelling of his name, there is a Dr. Ruggie who is a cardiologist that works at Oak Park Hospital in Chicago, Illinois. Okay. And so that is topic number one. I'm going to show you guys what I actually found. Okay. And I'm going to just take you to the first um, article about Dr. Ruggie so we can get into his accolades. And so it says his name is Dr. Neil Ruggie, MD. He is a cardiologist and he is 74 years of age. That is a photograph of Dr. Neil Ruggie right here. Okay. So this is Dr. Neil T. Ruggie, who works at Oak Park Hospital in Chicago, Illinois. Again, he is a cardiologist out there. I'm going to take it back and we're going to go to the next article so I can read to you his, his accolades and his subspecialties. Okay. And so we see that he is in general cardiology and he has two subspecialties. He works at Rush Oak Park Hospital. He has 20, 21 years plus experience. And there's the address right here. His overview reads as such, it says, Dr. Neil T. Ruggie is a cardiologist in Chicago, Illinois, and is affili affiliated with Rush Oak Park Hospital. He received his medical degree from John Hopkins University School of Medicine and has been in practice for more than 20 years. His specialty is cardiology. Cardiologists diagnose and treat heart disease such as congenital heart defects, coronary artery disease, heart rhythm disorders, and heart failure. Failure. Now, so we do not get, we don't have any misunderstanding. His subspecialties are general cardiology, adult congenital heart disease, cardiac electrophysiology. Now, I want you guys 
to pay attention to this because this is telling us we've already done the research, but for more clarity, this right here is telling us that his, this is his subspecialties. So we know that it's not possible for him to even work at Cook County's medical examiner's office because he's not a pathologist in that field. Okay. He does not study autopsy. He does. That's not what he does. He's a general cardiologist and he, he works with adult congenital heart disease and cardio, uh, cardiac electrophysiology. That's it. We know that he does not work at Cook County's medical examiner's office. But when the question became, did Island Girl just pull Dr. Ruggie's name out of a hat? Or does she actually know this man? Does she actually work for Dr. Ruggie? because it's very uncommon for someone to just think of a doctor's name like that. You know, we, we're gonna give her the benefit of the doubt here. We, we're gonna do this non-biasly, okay? So we get, Island Girl, we're giving you the benefit of the doubt. We have acknowledged that yes, there is a Dr. Ruggie that works in Chicago County, uh, I'm sorry, in Chicago, Illinois, okay? Now, the question for us is, how do you know him? You say you work for him. Maybe you do. That's something that we're never going to find out because, you know, we were more we were interested in you making the claims of being a medical examiner's assistant. But as I said before, we're not interested in your employment to the point to where we're actually going to call your employment we couldn't do so anyway because we don't know your legal name, your government name. So if anybody ever makes the claim that we actually call Island Girl's job and made things hard for her, as as she stated in the past, that is a blatant lie. That is a total falsehood because we don't know her legal name, okay? Now, one can call, like I did, because just out of curiosity, I did call Dr. Neil Ruggie's doctor's office and what ended up happening here. And I'm sure it's like that all across the US now. At one time you could have directly called your doctor's office. But now when you call your doctor's office, what happens is they get you, you are put in connection with a receptionist who will then take your information down. If you need a refill a prescription, they'll take that information down, then call the doctor's office and relate these orders to them. Then that doctor's office will then in turn get your prescription out to the pharmacy. That's how it works now, guys. It's, it, you know, you cannot, it's hard for you to get directly in contact with your physician unless you have an extreme emergency where that doctor actually needs to talk to speak with you personally. Like if you need to be, you call the, uh, you call the doctor's office and you got in touch with the um, answering service and then you say you have an emergency situation and you need to speak specifically with your doctor, then they'll relay that message and your doctor will call you back. But we don't have access to speaking to our physicians like we once did back in the day. So Island Girl, being fair to you, I am acknowledging that through further research, and it only took by changing the spelling of Dr. Ruggie's name that I did come up with a Dr. Neil Ruggie in Chicago, Illinois. He is a cardiologist who works at Rush Oak Park Hospital, okay? He does not work at Cook County's medical examiner's office. And so that brings me to my, my, and the conversation that was had the other night on EJ's channel when um, I think it was Tiffany 
who challenged Peppa Jones about some information that she had presented to the panel concerning a video that she saw some time ago, okay? And so my mind was a, a bit perturbed and, uh, you know, feeling kind of funny the way that Tiffany had challenged her about bringing receipts. And so when it became my mind's turn to speak, she was basically saying, why do only certain people have to present receipts and others didn't? And she brought them back to the time when Island Girl introduced her information to the panel about her being a medical examiner's assistant working for Cook County Medical Examiner's Office, knowing Dr. Ruggie and all that other stuff. We know the story. So Tiffany, Tiffany said that she had done her own research because she has seen other people's video concerning that issue. And what she found was that there was no Dr. Ruggie and basically stating the claim that she did not believe that Island Girl worked for that facility. Well, after that happened, I made a phone call. No, I knew this would to be not factual, but I still made the phone call because I wanted to clear the air for the entire J4K community that there is no Dr. Ruggie that works at the medical examiner's office in Cook County, okay? So what ended up happening was I got a receptionist who was a bit annoyed by me calling because I had called several times already. And she, in turn, informed me on the phone that there is no Dr. Ruggie that works at the Cook County's medical examiner's assistant. Now, let me bring it back for you guys again, okay? So the claim was made that Island Girl was the person at Cook County's medical examiner's assist medical examiner's office who received Kanika's body on the for the second autopsy. Okay? And so EJ just ran with that because he, he felt it would have been good for his channel and whatever. I you know I, I know I don't believe that he believed that Island Girl was actually a medical examiner's assistant. I think he just ran with it because, like I said, he felt it would have been, it would have drawn people in to his channel, okay? And so that was the claim she made. And when she did that, some of us went on to researching this information. And we, you know, first of all, we knew off the top that she wasn't because of her verbiage. And, and, and secondly, we knew off the top, we knew that that was false information because of all of the researching that we've done on the case files, okay? And for, that, for them to inject that kind of storyline into the case, it was just, it made some of us feel some type of weight. As I said before, Kanika's case is bad enough on its own without injecting all of the other nonsense okay and so now what happened on last evening is that ej went on a rant again calling people out of their name stating that people are stupid and uh you know he said that uh nosy bug was in love with him and um he just said all kinds of things, okay? Uh, he spoke on my mind and said that she had came on my platform and actually spoke with me and blasted them and put them down, talk bad about them. And I am here to clear the air on today, okay? What I said in my live the other day is that I took my hat off to my, my and Peppa Jones 
for standing their grounds during the conversation that they were having about bringing receipts. Because I feel like that too. EJ has a, a, a tendency to tell people to do something and when they do it, he wants to backtrack on what he's telling them. He's telling these people they don't have to believe him for them to do their own research. And then when they present the information, it's just not good enough for him. So that's why I said that I took my hat off to these ladies for actually standing up to him. Okay. My, my has never come on my channel. Not ever. I said, I would like to have a conversation with her. My, my did not come on my channel guys. So, I mean, basically everything he said in the first half of his life was actually totally false. And so he is feeding that falsehood to his people and which I, I feel it. I feel that so distasteful because as a channel holder, you have the responsibility to be as truthful as you can with your subscribers and the people that actually follow and support your channel. No one likes to be led astray and lied to. And so in my heart of hearts, I know that the ladies on his panel actually know that the entire storyline that they are following along with EJ is total BS, but they have their own personal agenda for participating in it. So that's not my problem. I'm not going to even get into that to each its own, you know, um, I'm a person of morals, you know, conviction and compassion. So the things that they're participating in on that channel is something I would never to be able to participate in. <coughs> um, and so, again, I'm going to say that I never, ever spoke to my, 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 and I have never had a conversation with one another about anything. So EJ was lying to his panel again on last night, guys. Just totally lying in it. I, I mean, he lies with such a smooth tongue. I, 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 I don't get it, okay? And so with that being said, that leads me to this next little topic, okay? And so... This next topic is about Ava, okay? Ava and I had a conversation some time ago, a very intense conversation where we were on the phone for, oh my, it, it probably was over five, six hours, okay? And the reason the phone call came about was because she was under the impression that people were doing things to hurt her. And, you know, it made her feel some type of way. So she needed to address that. Okay. I gave her the opportunity to do just that. Okay. I gave Ava the opportunity to lay out her feelings. And if I could clear up some misinformation or some some things that she wasn't sure about, I was there to do that for her. I had a listening ear for her, I, and I, I, I gave her my time, okay? In spite of the fact that before we actually had this conversation, that she had been texting me and sending me really disturbing messages that I ignored, okay? I'm not going to get into trying to explain to anybody 
about the type of person I am. Because I think you guys can see and I think you can feel it, okay? One of the reasons why I've never spoken on Ava and I told that to her is because I know that she's dealing with something. And if I could have be a help to her, that's what I would have allowed the Lord to use me for, okay? In spite of the fact that in the midst of her being hurt, she was actually hurting me. In other words, I was willing, and I did, take the blows from, from her because I knew that she had something on her heart that she needed to work out. In other words, I let her beat me up so I can try to help to build her up. Okay. I am not a person who goes back and forth with people. This is not what my channel is about. When you see me posting a video on this channel, it's because somebody has directly Hold on, guys. Somebody has directly attacked me in a way that my heart won't allow me to let it go because I know I'm not a spiteful person. I don't do things to hurt people. Just like the incident with EJ. When he took my picture and did the things that he did with it. Everybody saw the video that I made, okay? He posed a question to the community, and I responded in good faith, and he turned around and did the things that he did to me with my photograph, okay? That made me feel some type of way to the point to where I said, I can't let this man who I don't know disrespect me in that way. So there was a video made directly addressing what he did to me. But my character in the video that I put out was in good faith towards him because he, he asked a question and I was trying to answer it, okay? And so now the situation with Ava is, I know that she is dealing with some issues we all are dealing with real life issues. If I were to tell you guys the things that have happened in my personal life in the last two months, you guys wouldn't even understand how is it that you can still hear my voice and it doesn't seem like I'm, I'm broken. I'm going to answer that for you. And I wish Ava would pay attention. I have a faith in God that is unbreakable. Okay? I believe that life's journey is a teaching for us all 
everything that we go through in life, my faith in God and my referral back to the problems that I have, I can go to the, that Bible and get every answer that I need out of it. And I hold fast to the words that he tells me. In other words, I believe everything he say. My faith is unshakable. And so when other people can't make it through because this and that and the other has happened in their life, I can move through life and people not even know that I'm going through because I believe him. I hope you guys understand that. And so that's why I don't go on the attack with Ava because I pray that she gets to the place in her life where she is able to choose her battles wisely. Every battle that comes across the battlefield does not need to be fought by the person being attacked. I'm going to say that again. Every battle that comes on the battlefield does not be, need to be fought by the person being attacked. You see, my faith is so strong in God that when the enemy draws his weapons, I absolutely know that I can put on the full armor of God and truly be protected. Because I got that crazy kind of faith and belief in God. Not only do I believe in fighting with his word, I actually believe and hold true, hold the words that he said. When he told us that each and every person that belongs to him has angels assigned to them in this life. And so, because I know I have angels assigned to me, when I, when I feel like I'm being attacked by the enemy, that enemy may never know that I have responded because my response is different. I know how to fight in the air, so to speak. I can call down my angels and ask them to pr protect me over my head, beneath my feet, in the front of me, in back of me, and on each side of me. Jesus, build a fence all around me. And so, no, I don't respond the way people think I should respond all the time. And I choose to take that route with Ava. But the thing I won't do is let Ava use my platform to spew all that bitterness and all that anger and all that pain that she's dealing with in my chat room or in my comments. That is my platform. So this is why I'm publicly speaking on this. Something happened the other night again after Cassie and I extended an olive branch to her, she took it back. She took the olive branch back and she broke it in half. But I'm going to still leave her with her dignity. 
because that's just the person who I am. But Ava, I have to let you know, everything is not about you. Cassie was having a good discussion the other night. I was in the chat the entire time, even though I was not commenting because I was multitasking. You didn't, nobody knew I was in the chat. But most of the time when Cassie goes live, I'm in the chat the whole time and nobody knows that I'm there because I'm doing something. Like last night, I was in the chat the entire time. I went in and I spoke to everyone and then I checked out, but I was still there till the end and until Brazy came in and said that he had some copyright strikes. So some people will call that moving in silence. Yeah, I do that sometimes. But I'm going to tell the truth and shame the devil as well. Because what I saw happening in the chat was a misunderstanding on your part. You see, you have to learn to be stronger than that. And you have to learn that. Let me give this some time to play out. Let me actually understand what's going on before I go head on and make a comment and then end up looking foolish at the end of the day. These women were having a conversation all of their own. And you took it upon yourself to dive into their conversation and make it about you. They could have, they have the right to feel how they feel, just like you have the right to feel the way you feel. If they felt that the atmosphere was off in the chat room, then that was that is what they felt. You made it about you again, Ava. You don't know. They didn't say your name. So how do you know if they were speaking on you? I don't get that part. You sent me messages again on last night that I chose not to respond to because I'm a person who think things through. You continue to say that you have these attorneys, Ava. I hope and pray that your attorneys, if you do have them, they will give you good and sound counsel because you're making all these comments over a social media platform. These things never go away. They never go away. All of the videos that I have, my videos are not going anywhere because I didn't do anything to anybody to cause them harm. I said it once before, if anybody is getting social bullied, it would be me. It's just that my response is different. Again, choosing your battles wisely. Every battle that is presented before you does not need to be fought by you. I hope that sinks in. Even if Nosy Bug, Charlize, and this other lady was actually speaking about you. 
It shouldn't have mattered. That's the kind of person I am. That's the kind of woman I am. To you, nobody called you out of your name. Nobody said anything ill towards you other than the mood was funny and in, in, it, it, something to the effect of where it didn't feel right. <coughs> it could have been me not making them feel right. I don't know. You don't know who they were speaking about. Or you don't know if they just got a funny feeling. It didn't have to be about you. But you made it about you. The only thing I can do for you at this point, Ava, is continue to uplift you in prayers. Because I'm not the type of person to keep going back, you know, over things like that with people. We had called, we had came to some understanding. Okay. Like you said, you thought it, this it should have been squashed. It should have been squashed. But you, Ava, you reopened that wound. You did that. Nobody did that. Nobody else did it but you. And so with that being said, that these are the things that I wanted to address on this morning. I'm going to recap. The first thing I spoke about was Dr. Ruggie and giving Island Girl the benefit of the doubt. Going back and due to some more research and study, I changed the spelling of Dr. Ruggie's name and did come up with a Dr. Neil Ruggie, who is a cardiologist in Chicago, Illinois, working at Rush Oak Park Hospital. The second thing I spoke on was my my. Okay. Again, my my did not come on my platform. No matter what, what Edward Josephs tell you guys, my mind did not come on my platform. I did not have a conversation on uh, with my mind on my platform about Edward Island Girl or anybody else. That is a lie. Edward lied to his panel again on last night. And the third thing I spoke on was Ava. And with Ava, I, again, I say to you, I'll continue to pray for you. My sister, and you know, this is going to be done from a distance because I cannot make your problem my problem. And with that being said, you guys, today is Saturday. Tomorrow is Resurrection Sunday. You guys be blessed in the Lord. And when you wake up on tomorrow morning, understand that everything that this old life has done to you, everything that you've done to this old life, <laughs> Jesus paid it all on the price, on the cross for you. Every sin you ever committed. When he went up on that cross and stretched his arms out wide, took all of those stripes on his back, gave up his life, he did it with you in mind because he loved you so much. He loved you in spite of you. So why can't you love your neighbor in spite of your neighbor? And that's what I choose to do with Ava. You guys have a blessed day and enjoy Resurrection Sunday. Bye-bye.